What's up guys? If you saw the previous video then you'd know I already started a rear radiator setup. With my cilia front, the radiator doesn't fit. So I had to cut the rear and finally just went for it and put the radiator in the back. There are multiple reasons I'm putting the radiator in the back. Uh, for example, number one is weight. Putting the radiator back here is going to put uh, more weight in the rear part of the car, which is what I want for better grip and better balance. Um, I had it really far forward and it was a huge radiator so it had a lot more volume of water so I don't want that much weight over the front axles. Um, also number two, maintenance. You can maintain your car better, you can work on the front end better and you'll have all this access back here for the radiator in case you need to bleed it or whatever. Um, but the front is going to be the best part. You'll be able to remove, remove headers, you know, probably pull the engine without removing the radiator or anything. It's, it'll be just way better maintenance-wise. And the last reason is by clearing up some room in the front, now I have room inside the frame, rail, room inside the frame rails to put my oil cooler and my power steering cooler, which before they were outside the frame rail. That's kind of a safety aspect. You, uh, you want to keep everything inside the frame rail and as close to the center as possible. Just closer center of gravity plus... Uh, safety aspect and drifting you crash a lot so if you hit somebody from the front there there isn't a radiator there that could get punctured or broken i always get a little ahead of myself and i already took the radiator out of the front and i already started cutting the rear last time you guys saw this the glass was on it um, on there and then i had a firewall that came up and over i still have my original speaker uh holes in the back there that was right here and then on top of it i had another sheet metal that's over there somewhere um, and then I had a, a perfectly closed firewall. Um, but now what we're doing is I cut it, I cut this, this part out, which I actually ended up cutting too much here. I wish I, I cut it from here, uh, but it's too late now. And then this one, I cut exactly to the size that I wanted for the radiator and just bent it back. It's going to end up probably about this angle. And then the radiator falls perfectly in here to about here. Um, and that'll be the vent for the for the air for the radiator um, I will I need to weld something up back here then I need to weld right here and then from here to the glass there will be a plexiglass right here and from here to the plexiglass I'm trying to see if I can do more plexiglass with a uh, a little connection in the middle that way you can still see towards the back we'll see it's not a big deal most people just close it off completely but I'm gonna try to keep it th at this level and from here up it'll be uh, Lexan uh, rear glass or rear plastic. This bracket here used to be the bracket I had in the front here with my pop-up front bumper and it actually held the bumper right in place right there. Um, but it's not going to work anymore because I have a Sylvia front and it actually hits the headlight so I had to cut it out. But it, it, it works out perfect because I need to cut this piece out but the rest of it is literally the perfect size to go right in there. It's going to go like that and you can see it's literally the perfect size for that lip. I love it when reused parts work so great. Perfect. Now we're just gonna set it in there, tack weld it, and then take the radiator back off and weld it completely. Check this out. So I got the radiator in there. It, it's, that's where I want it, right? Um, I got the that mount the bracket put on there, but now I need to tack weld it. Obviously, it's really hard. I can't do it from there. I gotta do it from the back. And that's still gonna be hard because it's nice and tight in there. So I gotta fit the torch on the sides there and tack it. Then I gotta take the radiator out and then I can weld it and then I can put the radiator back in and keep going to the top. Now, what I can't show you is the fact that this side sits in a, in a higher spot on the, on the frame there. So this bracket had to be shorter than that bracket by about three quarters of an inch. But I didn't know that measurement until I kept testing and testing and cutting. I've literally cut like six times. Remember, measure twice, three times cut once in this case I measured three times then I cut then I measured three times and I cut and then I just kept going and going so it's been like an hour and a half and all I've done is cut two brackets that I haven't even tack welded together I'm pretty tired and I want to stop but then part of me wants to keep going but then another thing shows up right now here's the welder that's where I gotta go weld my extension doesn't reach the welder only goes up to here 
So the next thing I gotta do is figure out how to move Matt's car, move my car up, tack weld it, move the, remove the radiator, weld it, and then put the radiator back on, and then I can work to the top ones, and I, I gotta weld it, then I gotta move the car back so I can put my, Matt's car back in, because it can't stay outside. This is what sucks about working in a small, constricted garage, but you know, it is better than no garage being outside. I've done that a long time. It's not cool. It's hard, but you can't, you can't give up. You gotta keep going. I still gotta go home and edit two videos. Made it to Arthur's shop. This is gonna be exciting. He's uh, helping me see if we can get the car running a little better with HP tuners or he can see something that I can't see uh, because it runs like crap. Uh, I think it's something to do with my fuel cell, fuel pump, area, uh, probably kinked hose, probably something with that because it started running bad after um, that time I caught on fire in the rear. So I think it might have to do something with that. But he's not gonna spend too much time on that because we have to do the coolant lines, which is what he's helping me with. I'm pretty excited to show you guys how we're gonna run it. I'm gonna show you how he did his SE. This is Arthur's uh, party car. I don't know if you remember it before, he let me drive it. Um, it's a turbo LS and it's sick. And he recently did his radiator to the back because he was having a lot of cooling issues. So he ran the lines like this. He had to turn it because the CCU is there. Mine's not there, so mine will be just straight down. Under the seat, over here, to the back oh man the sun is kind of right there let me open the trunk and it comes through here what's that a swell pot and then back to the radiator and it is a very functional rear mount which is exactly what i am looking for i just need to cool my car and have all the weight in the rear i'm pretty excited because i was not aware that you could run the hard lines and it's you know i was actually kind of scared because i was like we gotta make all these bends but he's got a pipe bender and the one i have at the shop is not actually bolted down yet so i stepped in an amp pile it hurts Okay, so I should have done this yesterday, but I, I don't know why I didn't think about it. I had to remove my harness uh, because my harness used to go through that hole and it's not no longer gonna go through there. It's gonna come through over there now. Um, and my ECU is gonna sit back there, probably a little higher actually to get it, keep it away from heat. But this is uh, the idea I came up with and I think Arthur likes it. It works, um, looks like mine. Yeah, on his, he actually used the aluminum through the, the sheet metal and then the couplers after it. I made a bulkhead, so there's a coupler on each side. Exactly, so he can remove it a lot easier. Mine's not gonna be, I think it's, cause you, there'll be a coupler literally through the firewall. It's a little sketchy cause it could get cut. So we'll have to protect that somehow. Um, but then we're gonna run a line through there, through this hole here, which we gotta widen a little bit. Then he said two straight couplers here. So that's one piece. And then right here at 45, 45 comes back to right underneath the bottom part of that firewall. And that's where the other couplers are, right? There's a U right to the radiator, and the other one's at the top of the radiator. And had to take all this apart. My fuel pressure regulator is going to have to move either here or here, probably more over that way. And then that's where they end up. Pipe's going to come over here, hug tight right here, one underneath the other. 
And one's gonna come right there, the other one's gonna come across to another 90 that goes right here. And that's it. Got the front two pipes done. Go right in there, they meet, then they go sideways into there. And then, he's got these other two already done. Right from the coupler, underneath there. This pipe's above. This is the one he's working on right now. Boom, right to the radiator. I made a mistake, cut the hole a little bit too far to the right, and then we had to cut it straight. And now I'm gonna have to reseal that part on the right, because they're gonna go one above the other. Over on the he just finished this bend right here and it's so perfect. You guys, you don't even understand. That's not bolted down or anything and it meets perfectly. That's awesome. Right to there, to there. Look at that. Comes out to right there. Here's the end. You, done. Got the second one done, so it comes across this way. Boom, boom, and then it crosses over, one above the other. Um, this one just a little, a little gap. This one's perfect, but along a long straight there will be fine. And it's like legit a perfect bend all the way up there. Arthur did a great job there. And then if you look back here. It comes one above the other. That one bends perfectly into this 90 here. And then the other one comes out down there, which is going to come to a U right there that I have right here. This one's just going to go right there. And that's it. That's the radiator setup. Thank you so much. To be legal in most competition or even just safety for bigger name tracks, um, this has to be sealed uh, twice, not only on the pipe that you're using, but also, uh, again, just in case this pipe ruptures, which it won't. Uh, most people use AN lines, those could probably break. I guess the couplers could break in this instance, so we have to cover them. Uh, we're gonna cover the whole thing though, all the way to the back. Anything that's inside the cabin with the driver, or the passenger has to be covered. This is gonna be the end of this video. Um, we got a lot of other work to do. Wait for some more couplers. I gotta redo my wiring. I gotta do the firewall. And then the car should be ready to go. Uh, then after that, it's just the whole front end and paint and all that. I gotta thank Arthur from Bell Raceworks. Go check him out. He makes a lot of cool parts. Seat brackets, e-brakes, shifters, uh, diff braces, all kinds of cool, cool stuff. So. The link's gonna be below. And uh, thank you guys for liking, subscribing, watching. Goodbye. Goodbye, Arthur.